So I'm just going to connect the speaker with clip leads, but first I want to check my clip leads. I have this really cool checker. It's not really meant for clip leads, but it will do it. Ooh, I'm making my batteries a little low in here. Yes, it is. Okay, so. Green light. The thing about using uh, clip leads on a speaker is if the clip leads giving trouble, either because it didn't clip in right or whatever, um, you can usually tell because there's always a bit of hum, a bit of hiss coming out of the speaker if it's working. So if it, I don't hear any hum or hiss, if the speaker's absolutely dead, I'd be suspicious of these leads. But for now, this will do. So put that there. Hook these guys up. Hook them up in the right spot. Yeah, I'm about to hook it up on the wrong side of the transformer. That would not be good. There we are. Okay, now. What else could we possibly need to do this radio before attempting to power it up? I think the answer might be uh, put an antenna on it. Connect it to some kind of antenna. Okay, so we're going to look at the antenna terminals here. One, two, three of them. Three of them. So it's going to be AM, FM, and ground. Okay, so the ground should be easy to, to figure out. The ground should be connected to the chassis. Huh. Doesn't seem to be. Let's take another close look here. So first, if it were connected to the chassis, you, you wouldn't imagine this hole to be here or, and it's clearing the chassis completely. So, so we don't know. What about the back? What about the back? What's it say on the back? Ha! Okay, good show. Okay, don't need to think any harder. Y1, Y2, and ground at the bottom. Y1, Y2. Why? Yeah, why two? Why? Why? <laughs> why a why one and a why two? Why? Um, I said FM. There's no FM in here, is there? There's no FM in this radio. No way. It's all AM and short wave. Yeah. Okay. No FM. So why one? Why two? What's the difference? This one. Looks like this this lower pin is just resistored from the upper pin, and the upper pin has a lead going off down into the radio. So I'm guessing you get too strong of an antenna, you stick it into this this one, and if the antenna is short or weak, you stick it in this one, and you probably, in the course of operating the radio, you probably just just try both spots. Uh, I think what they're trying to avoid here is making the radio really sensitive and then having somebody connect a whopper antenna to it, presenting the radio with strong signals and lots of, uh, of noise and stuff like that um, when the radio's too hot, it's too, it's, too, uh, it's too strong, it's got too much gain in it. So you have these two posts, that's my guess. There's nothing more than a resistor in there kind of weird, eh? So you go put up this great big antenna and then you stick it in here through a resistor. But what that would still give you probably is better signal to noise ratio and that's really what radios are all about. Signal to noise ratio. So if we want to hook up an antenna, we just hook it up, well, hook it up to this one here. Dubillier drillic, dr drill drillitic, drillitic. Okay, Dubillier, Dubillier, dr <laughs> that's a tongue twister. Capa well, capacitor, type something or other. A 50-50, can negative. A 
made in England. Made in England in a Philips radio. Oh, Philips making stuff in England? Well, that, sir, you know, it's you know, it's just possible. I don't really know how these things were done. This whole thing was assembled in North America here, and how all these parts were just sent over and put together here. I don't know. I don't know. I doubt it. Because it just says Rogers uh, distributed, Rogers and Majestic distributing it. So I'm pretty sure this is Philips' way of getting their radios into the North American market by hiding them inside a Rogers branded radio. When you look at it from the outside, when you, when you look at the radio cabinet here, it, it you know it doesn't jump out. Hey, you're, I'm European, not at all. So this is Philips' way of sneaking their European radios into North America, and I caught them. I've caught them. <laughs> they thought they could get away with it, but no, they've been caught. Okay. Now, antenna tubes. Got to put the tubes in. That would be good. Luckily, I have a tube map. I also have a better camera here. Okay, tube map. 3V41S5. 3V41S5. One S five, one T four. Three V four is making trying to make an escape, but uh, didn't succeed. Three V four. One EC6 up up here. One EC6. And then the one T4 has to go on the last socket. She's tubed up. She's sp speakerized. What happened here? De-speakered itself. Speakerized and tubated. Antenna rated. I gotta stick an antenna on there. Then we're ready to go. We're ready. What are we ready to go on? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna jump in there right away. And I gotta figure out how to supply the uh, heater voltage to the radio safely. And I, I think I have a way. I've done it before. In a way that turned out to be quite safe. One one safe way is just just use a battery. That's a very safe way. But I have a power supply, which I think is quite safe too. That would be the antenna connection. So I'll fetch my power supply, get that set up here, ready to go. Okay, now because I'm a nervous nilly with uh, grounding in this kind of situation, I'm going to have more than one power supply powering this radio. The first power supply has a three-prong plug, so does the next power supply. And these ground, ground, grounded terminals could be connected in two different places on the radio. That would be bad, two different electrical places in the radio. So my question is, is the uh, negative terminal coming out of this power supply connected to the prong here? And so let's just test it out. I've already done this. No, it is not. That's a good thing because if we take a look at my power supply we're going to be using, the high voltage power supply here. And we kind of do the same sort of thing with it. This, this is ground right there. Ground. And now I'll, I'll just touch another three, uh, three prong instrument here. Okay, so but I don't normally connect here. I connect to this terminal, which is marked as common, separate from ground. 
and inside there's a dotted liner. Da, 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 da. So what's that mean? So let's check here. I've done this before, but you know what? I got to do it again all the time. So there's nothing. So the dotted line da, 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 indicates you could, I think what it's trying to say is you could connect these and introduce a power system ground onto the negative terminal of the high voltage supply here. But normally, no, there is no connection back to the power system ground or the neutral in my house from this terminal. That's pretty important to know. So neither of these power supplies have a grounded output. Therefore, I can throw caution to the wind here. And just do whatever I fancy. Okay, so now the DC power supply here, this one, this low voltage one. Better make sure this is all the way down. As I'm Right now, if I plug this in, I was just setting myself up for an accident here. I could plug this in have the switch on, voltage set wrong, everything set wrong, and the uh, party's over in an instant. I, I, I want this party to last here. Okay, so that's the story on the heaters. It's all ready to go. I happen to know that the output of this thing is roughly 1.3 volts uh, when this control is all the way down. And I also know you can turn this control up about this far and nothing happens. Why don't we just take a look at that? Let's just uh, pull one lead out, switch it on. Oh, gotta plug it in. Plug it in. This uh, power supply, which I've used an awful lot, was it's a home-built power supply, but not by me. It's from my buddy Scott, a uh, buddy of mine, built one for himself and built one for me too. So it's on. Little red lights on. The voltage is up ever so slightly. Let's just measure that, just, just to be so sure. Because if you pop the uh, pop the heaters on these tubes, it's over. See, so yeah, like a regular tube, like a regular six volt tube, you can probably jam 12 volts on it for quite a while. But uh, these little tubes. No, so there's the actual voltage, 1.2. That's perfect for my purposes here. Perfect. Okay, so we'll leave this lead out too, just as a little bit of a safety deal. Now, a high voltage. So, we look at the battery terminals here. red. So the orange, that's a meaningless color. So this orange is just, it's not doing a big job, it's just running between this connector and that connector. So this is the negative, and this is 90 volts positive. You stick two 45 volt batteries in here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my power supply, I'll hook it on this red one here, I'm going to gamble. It's not much of a gamble, that red means positive and black means negative, not much of a gamble. Down, 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 off. Everything's ready. Off. Okay, so we're ready. I won't hook it up. Won't hook it up. I think we're all ready to try this guy out now. See what happens. Volume. Tuning. Band. Which band is which? Okay. Oh, so it shows me. Okay, so I want to get on the AM radio band. That's going to be oh, I have this knob in upside down for crying out loud okay upside down now what so it wants to be all the way this way all the way this way yeah I think that's got it it's not the AM band it's not the end of the world anyway so I think we're on the AM band 
antenna not connected but ready. High voltage not connected but ready. Low voltage not connected but ready. Ready, ready, ready. Okay, so the next step without heating the tubes is to apply the high voltage, bring it up a bit, and see if there's a heavy leakage current in the radio. Um, put this on here. No heaters going. You look up thusly. Voltmeter, current meter. My expectation is the current will hardly rise on this meter. I can get this all the way up to 90 volts and, and virtually see no current on here. That's my thinking. Put on standby, warm it up. Everything I use has tubes in it. It's a world of tubes. Or as I like to think of them, little tiny particle accelerators. Okay. We are ready now. So all eyes on this meter. Voltage down. Okay, here we go. Uh, up to 100 is around here. It's already got 20 or something volts on it. Up to around there. We're going up. So you see this rise up and fall back. This is charging up something. Okay, so we're up in the range of 90 volts now. Touch higher. Let's check it. Let's see where we really are. Where are you really, Jim? Fifty two volts. And it's about sixty on this meter here. Let's go a little higher. The battery operated radio, you expect very little leakage in the high voltage when the tubes are not lit. So we're only at seventy volts still. Now this meter's come up a little wee bit. Get her up a little higher yet. What am I doing? Okay, so we're at 90 volts now. There's a, definitely a significant leakage current here. So if you're running this radio with batteries, um, I don't think they're going to last too long under the current situation. But that, that was a pun, by the way. Um, how much current is that? Well, it's 25 milliamps to the first thing here. So that's five, you know, that's like two milliamps. And I haven't heated the tubes up yet. So that's not too good. Well, that's probably leaky capacitors, and I'll bet you it's those black black guys in there, the... Uh, the uh, molded capacitors. Now, is this dangerous to operate? Uh, no, nothing dangerous about it. My power supply can easily tolerate it. You can see a red line way up here. That's where I gotta get worried on the power supply itself. So, I think we're 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 good to try this radio out. Now, let's just for the sake of dragging this out more. Let's turn off the high voltage. Give it a moment to dissipate, and then we will bring on the DC. There's really very little chance that I'm going to burn out these tubes when I'm only supplying less than one and a half volts. There's no way for it to multiply or, oops, or, or, or end up something other than what it is. So, I've talked myself into it. Here we go. I'm at the moment of truth here. Okay can't turn this down any lower. When I hit the switch, the uh, ammeter here should hardly react. 
if at all. Let's see, is that right? Um, these are probably, I don't know, 250 milliamp tubes, 150, I think these are 150 milliamp tubes. One, two, three, four of them, plus a 3V is actually two. So it's actually five, 550s. Wow, that's like half an amp. Really? One T4. Let's just take a quick look here. 3V4, that'll do it. 3V4. Filament voltage, filament current in series, 50 milliamps. In series, 50, so these are 50 milliamp tubes. Each one drawing 50 milliamps. Uh, this one's uh, drawing double. So we got five tubes again, five, five, two, five, five filaments worth of 50 milliamps. That's 250, that's a quarter of an amp. So this should come up to something there. Just it should come up enough. <laughs> should come up enough, but not too much. Okay, ready? Nothing happening. Okay, so the switch is probably off here. Yes, the switch is off. The switch was off when I did that high voltage test. Okay, let's repeat the high voltage test. Because I think the switch was off. Okay, we're still connected on high voltage. We are, we're set for 90. So we're going to turn it down, turn the switch. I can see the contacts have been made. I will now repeat the high voltage test. Funny, with the switch off, we're seeing leakage through the radio. How does that happen? That's an interesting question. Schematic might answer that question. So here we go. Here we go again. All right, back up in the 90 range. Ah, if anything, it looks like less. Less current. Now that could be because I still have charges in the capacitors in here. So, so that, that inrush charge current didn't have to happen don't see anything unusual going on here okay I'll leave it connected or just crank down the voltage ready again on the heaters this time the switch is on the switch is off on the power supply here Got too many things to look at at once Okay, here's plug back in. Heater switch back on. No current. Okay, bad cable. Let's see if there's voltage down here at the end of the cable. Down here. What is happening? What's happening? Man, how come that's not showing anything? Okay, on the clip leads. Nothing showing up. What's going on? Get some more bad cables here.
try these. Power on. Tiny rise. And that should not go right over. Not quite right, but there's definitely power at the end of these ones. Switch off. Voltage down. Down, down, down. Everything down. Down where it should be. Goes up. Okay. So where are we now? We're about to stick heater current on here. The high voltage supply is connected but not on. Antenna's not connected yet. Speaker looks like it's connected. Okay. Volume halfway. Switch on. There's like no current here. Well, it seems like a stupid thing to do, but let's put on the high voltage and just see if anything comes out of the speaker. Yeah, it's going off. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. It's cranking up. Listening now. something there. Let me open and close the switch here a little bit, see if we hear any popping or wait, 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 whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait, wait a second here. Whoa, what was that? I thought this was the on off switch. What's this? on-off switches? How's that? How's that? How's that work? No help from there. Uh, huh. Tone control. So this is a tone control. You know, it's flipping switches right on this output line. That's got to be the tone. Okay. <laughs> I don't like it when stuff like that happens. When uh, I find out I'm busily doing stuff here, completely wrong about how stuff works. But, you know, when you start on a radio like this, you, you, you don't know all kinds of stuff. And uh, as you're working away on it, you're, you're learning all kinds of stuff about the radio. It's not too surprising to get wrong ideas in your head. So if that's what that is, that's a tone switch, then this is the on-off switch. It's off right now. No current here, no current well, it looks like a tiny current up there. So that, that went up. A teeny, tiny, teeny amount. Teeny, tiny, teeny amount. Volume full. Band change. Let's see if we hear that. With with the volume full, I'm doing this, of course. Let's 
keep thinking I hear things out of the speaker, but it might just be a little rubbing sounds from the things I'm moving. Okay, let's put an antenna on it, because I have been fooled in the past by a silent radio. Put an antenna on it, and suddenly it's not silent. Not the case here. Volume full. Band switch doing nothing. Tube wiggling. Okay, so I definitely heard some crackling there. It's really hard to hear. Oh, look at how loose that is. This one is mounted on rubber, rubber mounts. That's not done by accident. Mechanical sounds coming from here. I keep thinking I hear out of the speaker. Now, I'm not seeing any current going into the heaters, so I don't think there's any chance that, that the tubes are hot. It's just no, there's no power going in. Why would that be now? Oh, boy. Well, there we are. We are now ready to start troubleshooting, because uh, there's trouble. There's trouble about here. Kind of a cold start, isn't it? Okay, that's enough for now. That's more than enough for now. Hey, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next, on the next video.